Welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. I hope you're having a fantastic day, evening, afternoon uh, to you, wherever you are watching this. Alright, um, we're going to be looking at market failure today. For a lot of you guys, you will realize that this is actually our first ever video on market failure. Uh, for some of you guys who are new here, right, go ahead and subscribe to the channel okay, so that you can um, stay tuned, not stay tuned, but so that you can, you know, be kept updated on my latest videos that come out. Alright, so we're going to be looking at this market failure chapter today, covering positive externalities in this video. So it's going to be quite a long series, I feel, because we're going to be looking at the different types of externalities, which is going to be mainly your positive and negative externalities. And then we're going to be looking at public goods, we're going to be looking at information failure, asymmetric info versus your imperfect information, and other various uh, market failures such as market dominance and more. So go ahead and make sure that you understand what all these different causes of market failure are because after which we're going to be jumping into policies right so i'm going to be separating the two first we're going to be looking at causes first and then after that policies later on so on this part on your causes of market failure i left it more towards the end of the syllabus right reason being is that i feel that it's actually something that is very easy and a lot of the schools teach it very very well so this will just be more of a recap for some of you guys who may still be a bit unsure um, hopefully it acts as a form of clarification, okay, be it when it comes to your diagrams or the way you analyze in um, the way you explain your market failure. All right, so without further ado, let's just jump right in. So let's go through the first and foremost, what is the definition of externalities? So externalities, be it positive or negative, right, they have different meanings later on, we'll see, um, occurs when consuming or producing a good or service has an impact on third parties, so extern externalities, right? So it's something that is external. So it's got an impact on third parties who are not directly involved in this consumption or production of the good or service. So we'll take a look at how externalities work after which. So when you look at positive externalities, in this video, it's all just going to be a positive externalities. Negative externalities are in the next part. Positive externalities, we're looking at third party benefits. So it is an impact that a consumption or production of something, like right, a certain good or service, has on a external external party. So in this case, it's going to be a benefit since it's positive. So it's a positive externality. So this positive externality actually causes a divergence between your social marginal benefit. Right? Some of you may call it marginal social benefit. We would use it interchangeably, uh, interchangeably later on. But stick to one, right? be it your marginal social benefit, MSB, or SMB, which is social marginal benefit, and private marginal benefit. So we'll look at this on a diagram point of view later on. So positive externalities can be brought about by consumers or producers, right? be it consumption or production. So when you look at a question, when the question gives you a certain scenario, you have to be able to identify whether you're looking at positive externalities generated as a result of consumption or as a result of production. So you have to be very mindful of these two different ways in which externalities can be produced because it would really determine your answer later on when it comes to explaining who the third party effects are on and what your private benefits or social benefits are going to be. All right, so explaining a market failure, we're going to be going through the, the various steps right, to actually crafting a, a whole explanation on why positive externalities leads to market failure. So first things first, we're going to be looking at a case on education so in the market for education, or let's say healthcare, right, positive externalities usually occur. Market failure is very, very um, inherent, right? Reason being is that uh, we will be, we'll be looking later on, okay, that there are positive externalities which are generated. And hence, this is why most of your hospitals, your schools, right, you realize that they are always publicly funded. So usually the government is the one which is in charge of creating them, in charge of um, owning these hospitals or owning these public schools. So the first things first, you want to be able to first define what market failure is as well as what positive externalities are. So market failure is the occurrence as a result of economic efficiency. So market failure occurs as a result uh, not, there's no is over here, by the way. So, occurs as a result of economic inefficiency in the market, where in this case of market failure, it is actually brought about by positive externalities. So, now you need to be able to explain what positive externalities are. So, positive externalities occur when consuming or producing a good or service has a positive impact on third parties 
who are not directly involved in the consumption or production of the good or service. So always remember, we're looking at the external impact. We're not looking at the impact on the consumer themselves or the producer themselves. So these third parties are not at all involved in the consumption of education in this case. All right. After which, you do want to be able to explain the marginal private benefit and the marginal private cost to the consumer of education. Right, we're looking at consumption here of education, so we're going to be explaining what these benefits and these costs are to the consumer themselves. So the marginal private benefit to the consumer of education is the additional knowledge that is gained from education. Always remember, we are looking over here at something that is marginal. Marginal always means something that is an additional, so it is like an add-on. So we're not looking at just the benefits that are gained, but it is an additional benefit that is gained from um, consuming education. While the marginal private cost is the additional cost required to consume an additional unit of education, such as through school fees. So we're always going to be looking at additional, additional, additional benefit costs in the case of market failure because when you look at marginal private benefit or marginal private cost or marginal social benefit it is an always additional it's like an add-on so it is not necessarily that um, we're looking specifically at the tangible benefits that education can bring but it is the additional benefit when you consume an additional unit of that good so always remember this right we're always looking at additional so in the free market, consumers would consume up to where MPB equals to MPC so as to maximize their own welfare. So that means that an additional benefit from one additional unit of good equals to the additional cost of the additional unit of good. So when the additional benefit is equivalent to the additional cost, that is where consumers feel satisfied because the additional cost that they used to pay for the additional good matches the benefit the same amount okay it, it may be intangible but it matches that same amount of benefit hence they would feel very very satisfied so this is when they maximize their own welfare so next one you want to be able to explain the marginal external costs and state any so any form of assumptions so in market failure when you're looking at positive externalities we're always, always going to be assuming one thing that there is the absence of negative externalities right when there are positive externalities occur there is no way that negative externalities can occur at the same time Okay, vice versa for the other case. So your marginal external cost will be equivalent to zero. And thus, your marginal social cost equals to your marginal private cost since your marginal social cost equals to MPC plus MEC. We'll look at this on a diagram later on. I know it may sound a bit confusing now. Uh, we'll look at it in the diagram. Okay, after this step, you want to be able to explain in detail the positive externalities. So positive externalities arise as the consumption of education results in spillover benefits, right? We're always looking at additional benefits, right? So these are the benefits that will spill over to your third parties, such as, for example, family members through increased awareness and understanding of the issues around them, allowing them to make better choices. This is completely up to your own um, explanation. You can explain however you want it as long as it's logical. But you have to clearly define who is the third party that's involved in this case. So in this case of education, it will likely be the parents of the kids or either that the grandparents or either that the kids, um, maybe they are friends who may not be as educated as them. Um, they will be able to pass on this knowledge. So it's an additional benefit that as a parents tend to get, right? When you start explaining to your parents what is the concept of um, market failure, right? Then they start to have this added understanding of what market failure is all about. It is an additional spillover benefit to them. So this is why um, this is a positive externality. Okay, after this, you want to be able to explain the divergence between your MSB and MPB, which is known as your MEB. So likewise, your formula goes MSB equals to MPB plus MEB, which means that the marginal private benefit, the additional benefit plus the additional cost, um, um, additional external benefit to your third parties will be equivalent to your societal benefit. So hence, due to positive externalities, there will be a divergence of your marginal external benefit between the two MSB and MPB, since MSB equals to MPB, your marginal private benefit plus your external benefit. So how you can look at it, right, is basically MSB is the entire society. So let's say this society consists of the consumer, which is, let's say we call it, let's call this you, okay, and a consumer of education, and it consists of third parties. For instance, uh, this looks very strange, but let's say these are parents. 
Alright, so these are basically third parties, but third parties are not specifically um, tied down to these parents itself. Right, it could also include, let's say, the uh, government. Right, let's say the government stands to benefit from uh, more scholars. Okay, let's say there's an increase in the level of skill of your um, people, of your, of your students. So this will also be a benefit to them. So essentially what you're looking at over here, when you're looking at the external benefit, is you're looking at this group over here. So it is everyone else that is apart from you as a consumer. But when you're looking at the marginal private benefit, you're only looking at yourself, which is the consumer. So now you realize why when you yourself as a consumer, when you and society join forces, you actually, I mean, when you and these third parties, for example, the government, for instance, firms, anyone else that is basically not you but exists within society, those are all considered third parties or potential third parties. When you add these two up together, you would actually form your MSB, your society. So that's one way you can look at it in case you're confused by these formulas. Likewise, the same thing for your cost, which goes MSC equals to MPC plus MEC. All right, so this is just a way for you to see it in case you may be confused. All right, then after this, you want to be able to draw that diagram. So drawing diagram is very, very simple. I've already drawn it over here for you guys. Essentially, what you're going to be looking out for is that, okay, take your MPB and your MSB as your demand curves, right? We have learned demand and supply before. Whereas your MPC, MSC, this is going to be looking like your supply. Reason being is that demand... Uh, the reason why we look as M we look to MPB as uh, similar to demand is because MPB, if you realize, is actually what a consumer would be consuming. And consumers consume where MPB equals to MPC. So essentially, this is like your demand and your supply. Consumers demand for a good, hence there will be an additional benefit that they stand to gain. Right? On the other hand, there is also an additional cost, but this cost can only be possible if there is a supply to begin with. So this is one of the analogies that a lot of teachers use for students to be able to remember whether um, which side is the marginal private cost, which side is the marginal private benefit. One way you can look at it is from a demand and supply standpoint, whereby your cost is also always going to be increasing, while your demand is not, say, decreasing, but your demand will look from the marginal private benefit. So it's additional benefit that a consumer stands to gain. So just remember, for those of you guys who may be unsure, cost, think of it as cost always going to be rising. Hence, this line is like your supply curve and your demand curve is basically your MPB, which is basically downward sloping. So as a result of this, right, your MSB is going to be outside because your marginal social benefit is going to be more than what your marginal private benefit is. So hence, this causes a divergence of MEB, which is indicated by this area here, which I will shade very nicely. So this is what we call your MEB. So what happens is that when this divergence is formed, right, because of your positive externalities, right, the reason why there is a divergence is because of the positive externalities, which is basically illustrated by your MEB over here. It causes this divergence, right? Hence, the consumption where your MPB equals to MPC is going to be over here at QE. And your social marginal level, your socially optimal level of consumption is where MSC coincides with MSB, which is going to be over here at QS. So this is one thing that you guys want to be able to take note of, okay, how to draw your diagram. So very simple, your y-axis is always going to be cost, benefits, and price. Your x-axis remains as quantity. So firstly, draw your axis, quantity, cost, benefits, and price. After which, draw in the two main curves that you need to know, which is going to be firstly, when the consumers maximize welfare, they would consume where MPB, excuse my a bit shaky line, uh, where it coincides with your MPC. So after that, because of the, there is the absence of negative externalities, there is no external cost, no marginal external cost, MPC equals to your MSC. But because of your, um, sorry, so we're going to also write here QE. So this is basically when um, your consumers want to maximize welfare, that is the level that they will consume at. But because of positive externalities, it causes a divergence of your MEB. So you can just draw a little bit of a divergence. And then this would have your socially optimal benefit level, MSB. So this is how you draw it. So this over here would be your QS. And this shaded area here would be your 
external marginal benefit. So this is one way you can um, do it. Okay, this is basically how I would draw the diagram. Firstly, start off with drawing the private marginal benefit section, after which you slot in um, your social marginal costs, and after that, slot in the external parties, right? Your external benefits, in this case, your third party benefits, and then slot in your MSB, and you can find this thing. So over here, the middle part, which is shaded, we call it the dead weight loss. So I'll go through the next slide. So lastly, you want to be able to explain the socially optimal level and the dead weight loss to society. So the socially optimal level, like we saw just now, is QS, when your MSC equals to MSB, when additional cost to society equals to the additional benefit gained by society for the additional last unit of education. So because your quantity of your socially optimal level is more than the um, level of consumption by, by your consumers, there is actually an underconsumption of education as for every additional unit of consumed education um, between QE and QS, what happens is that your marginal social benefit will be more than the marginal social cost. So this will result in a dead weight loss to society as represented by that shaded area just now. So with the presence of a dead weight loss, there is hence economic efficient inefficiency and hence this results in market failure in the market of education due to positive externalities. Alright, I'm just going to show you on the diagram real quick. So what I was talking about here is over here. When you have got QS over here and you have got QE over here, you realize that the social optimal level is at QS. This is the social optimal level. I'll call it SOL for now, okay? What happens is that in between this area, you realize that the additional benefit that society stands to gain can actually be increased. Right, reason being is that when you're consuming over here, you're only consuming at QE. This is where all consumers are consuming at. This is the market level. But the socially optimal level when everyone has has sense to have even greater benefits is at your um, QS. So in order to do this, what happens is that you would have to move upwards. You need to move rightwards, correct? So that you can hit your MPB equals to MSB. So as a result of this, it actually causes a dead weight loss, which is by this shaded area over here, which is your MEB. Hence, there is actually an underconsumption, right? Because your quantity that is consumed, which is QE, is less than the quantity of your socially optimal level, which is QS. So all in all, when you're looking at market failure, there is going to be um, economic inefficiency here because of this dead weight loss, welfare loss to society. Reason being is that should you be able to increase the level of consumption, there will be increased additional benefits to society. Right? Just that that isn't realized. So that is what it's saying in this explanation here. Right, if you're still a bit confused, you can just leave a comment in the section, a quick uh, description below. Not description, sorry, the comment section below and I'll answer them. Um, if not, that is what this part I'm trying to explain is all about. So exam requirements, you just need to be able to define the positive externalities. So I explain what pos positive externalities are and be able to write an essay explaining how they result in market failure. So I've already gone through the entire essay. You just need to follow all the different seven steps in this case and you should be good to go. Alright, so if not, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions, like I said, leave it in the comment section below. I will answer them as soon as possible. If not, do be sure to give this video a like. As well as subscribe to the channel. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And um, that would really help me out a lot. Alright, so I hope you guys did um, learn something, hopefully. Um, I know that some parts may still be a bit confusing. So go ahead and take it slow. With more practice on market failure, positive externalities, you will slowly get a hang of it. And it will start to become very, very simple. But you first need to be able to write out this entire essay itself first so go ahead and practice replay this video a few times if you need to so that you can understand better if not um i think that will be all that we have for this video i'll see you guys in the next part on negative externalities have a good one bye bye